This video is sponsored by Brilliant. In this video, we're exploring the origins of one of the most world-changing inventions, gunpowder. This video will kick off the progressive evolution we'll be exploring in the invention of the firearms, exploring each of the gradual progressions and evolutions that took humanity from the bow and arrow to today's guns. This video itself is going to cover the genesis of gunpowder and some of its very first earliest uses. The challenge in covering this topic is that YouTube's policy explicitly disallows content showing instructions on the manufacture of firearms and ammunition, which is part of the reason that I've been very reluctant to actually start this series on gunpowder and have only kind of touched on it in a few earlier videos. However, it's a very crucial invention to humanity's history, and I think it poses a really interesting question of at what point do you consider a gun a gun? As we're going through a very slow progression of things that definitely aren't guns into things that very much are guns. And that raises an interesting point, at which point YouTube will potentially block or age restrict our content. So there's gonna be a little extra roulette to this whole series, and then we might end up playing a bit of chicken with the YouTube platform. So let's see how far we can go before this channel gets banned. First up, to be clear, these videos are intended to be educational with hands-on experimentation of trying to recreate history it is not intended to be instructional. Working with gunpowder can be incredibly dangerous and should only be done if you have proper knowledge, know how to take the proper precautions when working with it, which we have tried to do as much as possible throughout all of this. Do not attempt anything in this video. Gunpowder was originally invented by accident between the 2nd and 9th century in China. It was supposedly first created in the search for an elixir of life. Its name in Chinese still reflects that, translating as fire medicine. From the beginning, its danger and violent potential was known, as the instructions included warnings about burning your face or burning down your building. These early recipes often included extra ingredients, a lot of times toxic and poisonous elements as well. Eventually it was narrowed down to three main ingredients. I have intentionally previously split some of these ingredients into separate videos about how to extract and manufacture them from scratch, with sulfur that I collected at a deposit just outside of Death Valley and then saltpeter, which I extracted through the droppings of chickens. With modern knowledge today, we now know how these three ingredients work together. Charcoal powder is the primary fuel source, sulfur allows everything to burn at a lower temperature, and then the primary ingredient is the saltpeter, which acts as an oxidizer, which adds oxygen to the fire when it burns allowing the compounds to burn incredibly fast. Which is amazing to realize that they figured this out 1600 years before the discovery of oxygen itself. It certainly must have seemed more like alchemy and magic to them. The burning potential of this compound had obvious potential use in warfare, but it seems that it initially had a kind of wide variety of different uses that are a bit different than what we would normally expect. Some early weapons included placing burning gunpowder tied to a bird and letting it fly towards the enemy to ignite their wooden structures. They also use a lot of variations of what's called a flying rat, fire spewing device, probably an early form of rocket. So let's try making a few of these early weapons from this era, just for comparison. First up, let's use a recipe for a fireball. This concoction, oddly, doesn't actually include charcoal, so it kind of isn't really gunpowder. But it does have all the other ingredients, plus a ton of extra stuff. We're gonna do a rough approximation of it, omitting a few toxic elements to it. It's like icing. That feels good. Once together, we have a nice messy meatball to leave to dry. Next up, I'll try to make a rough replica of what was called a watermelon bomb. The actual design of this is a little bit hard to understand from the description and the image, but it contains a bunch of the so-called flying rats. For those, I just packed gunpowder into small paper tubes with a hole at the end. For safety, I'm going to omit all the sharp hooks on the rats and the cull traps that would also be included. Then I wrapped everything in paper with a gunpowder paste. These were designed to be dropped down from walls or thrown into enemy boats. They would have a fuse on them inside of a bamboo tube so the enemy couldn't disarm it. Then once it would go off, the flying rats would scatter everywhere along with the cull traps, either directly cutting people or scaring them off to scatter so that they end up stepping on the cull traps and injuring themselves. But speaking of fuses, we should probably figure out how to make some of those. So we explored a few different methods of doing this, the first one is basically taking normal gunpowder and soaking it into some sort of cotton thread. Then we also tried out a few other ones where you basically wrap gunpowder with a little bit of glue inside of a paper and twist it up. Lastly, we tried a recipe for the slow match. So this one is single strand, just potassium nitrate. It's a very slow burning fuse in a way of carrying fire. It's like a very slow, <laughs> it works. 
Oh, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and we're dead. <laughs> Single ply cotton string with gunpowder. Black match. The black. Oh. Did we get the burning stuff off? I don't know what's happened. <laughs> Should we maybe? Oh, it's gone. We tested them all out and got a little bit of a variety of different results. Some of them were not very reliable. Some of them were a lot faster than we would really want in a real situation. And then the slow match was probably the most reliable, but it was still very slow. For our own safety and reliability, we're going to just use store-bought fuses just to reduce the chances of injuring ourselves here. All right, let's set off some of the examples of the early forms of gunpowder weapons. First, the watermelon bomb. This was kind of a blind stab at trying to recreate this since the description was so vague. The flying rats didn't go off all at once, but definitely got a good flash, bang, and a scattering of sparks and chaos. Having this thrown at you would definitely cause some panic and set a lot of things on fire. Next is the fireball. Wasn't sure what to expect, but this one worked surprisingly well. It didn't burst into an explosion or anything, but just slowly burned. With gloves, I was able to pick it up and throw it around, and it always stayed lit. Without any extra fuel, it kept burning for a good 10 minutes. I can definitely see this being launched on a catapult and doing some serious damage. Then lastly, we go on to the first gunpowder-based projectile weapon, fire arrows. These kind of became the dominant use for black powder for a while. With these, the black powder itself doesn't actually provide any propulsion, but it just kind of holds fire to the arrow to ignite the enemy fortification it's shot into. And there are likely other recipes that were used before they mentioned in gunpowder, but these had the advantage of having the saltpeter, which made them really hard to put out. Elliot forged a fire cage arrowhead, which is basically a hollow arrowhead that can hold the embers inside. Straight as an arrow. <laughs> Next up, we experimented with a few different ingredients to see how well they would work. First, with just an ethanol, which tended to be pretty easily extinguished. Wow. <laughs> Went out again. <laughs> then we tried adding some gunpowder to the cloth, but still didn't have too much luck with that. Left your fire behind. Yeah. So then we went back and experimented with a few other recipes, and covering it in pine resin to contain it a little bit more. Nope. Uh, so this one is cotton and potassium nitrate, uh, but we've embedded a piece of charcoal in the center in the hopes that it stays lit. Okay. <laughs> oh, I broke it. <laughs> That's why you don't point guns at people. <laughs> oh. Okay, so this is essentially our black powder mix, but in, uh, it's a 40%. Uh, potassium nitrate by weight um, instead of the usual, I think it's 75%, um, with the intent that it should burn a little bit slower, but we'll see. Oh. Hey. After a bit of trial and error, we were able to find a promising result for the incendiary arrows. Um, they still seem pretty hit and miss but the addition of gunpowder definitely made these a lot more effective than any 
other uh, recipe we really tried. The most interesting thing though is that we actually had to kind of downgrade our gunpowder recipe because initially we were using a more modern recipe that was a little too efficient and uh, especially after we encased it in pine resin, we basically accidentally invented a rocket, went flying off of the actual crossbow itself, which I think is very revealing of kind of probably how the next technologies in this were figured out. In the very beginning, they had a lot of issues with the black powder not being very pure and not really being possible to use for a lot of modern applications of gunpowder. I went through a lot of process myself in trying to purify saltpeter to get something at least remotely pure. Um, and some of my early tests show just how less effective that form of gunpowder is. So that's kind of why they were stuck with this technology for a little while, until they were able to master purification and getting something a little bit more potent. Because once you do that, you're able to really amplify the amount of propulsion and fire that gets spewed. That's kind of the next evolution of gunpowder we'll be exploring next, where we go from a projectile weapon that has gunpowder attached to it, but isn't propelled by gunpowder, definitely not a gun. And next up, we're going to turn the gunpowder into the actual propulsion device, and make it more of a rocket. So it's still not really a gun, but it is a projectile weapon powered by gunpowder. So as we progress, we'll get closer and closer to an actual firearm. You can definitely tell that the gunpowder that we use in it definitely made them a lot more effective. It's just hard to keep things on fire when they're flying through the air, but with gunpowder, it was just a lot easier and we were able to get a much better result. So these were very promising for fire arrow. The very first uses of gunpowder were very limited. And then as they improved the recipes and the purity of their chemicals, they kind of coalesced into our modern understanding of gunpowder weapons, where we start to get early forms of cannons, rockets, and bombs. So next up is the rocket arrows, where it's basically a rocket attached to it. Likely predating rockets were actual fire lances, which is basically the exact same concept pointed the other way and it's emitting the flame like a big flare. And it got a result very similar to flamethrowers. Eventually they figured out that they could start putting little rocks in there that would shoot out like a shotgun. That was basically the earliest form of a cannon. We'll leave the next few videos until we get into an actual cannon. As I said from the beginning, the fact that this is potentially going to get uh, blocked or age restricted on YouTube is going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm hoping we can do this in a way that not too instructional. The video might get demonetized or limited where it's not really gonna to be too profitable. So if you want to help supplement that and uh, continue supporting us as we progress down the evolution, consider uh, supporting us on Patreon uh, and that'll help fund these videos that are a little bit more controversial. And if they do end up getting banned on YouTube for whatever reason, we will share them on the Patreon platform. Thanks again for everybody's support and thanks for watching. See you next time. Figuring out the best way to amplify and harness gunpowder is something that took centuries of experimentation. If you want to kickstart your own knowledge and see if you can master things a little bit faster, consider today's sponsor of Brilliant. Ever find yourself stuck in a problem and wishing you could see it from a different angle? That's why I love Brilliant. It's not just about learning, it's about what learning unlocks. With Brilliant, you learn by doing. They've got thousands of interactive lessons that make complex topics like math, data analysis, programming, and AI click into place. What makes Brilliant truly special is how they build your understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is designed from hands-on problem solving, so you're not just memorizing. You're thinking critically and becoming a better problem solver. And the content, it's crafted by experts from MIT, Caltech, and beyond, making it six times more effective than just watching videos. Plus, Brilliant helps you build a powerful daily learning habit. In just minutes a day, you're learning personally and professionally, tuning your downtime into something truly meaningful. Check out Brilliant. Visit the link in the description to try out free for 30 days and get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Check it out at brilliant.org slash htme. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.